Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church. I hope wherever you are joining us for worship, you join in with that eternal refrain that changes life and death and every day forever, that he is risen indeed. Now, this morning uh, at Grace Lutheran Church for Worship, that is our theme, our triumphant theme, the uh, bursting from the tomb of Jesus Christ, the promising life eternal to every single one of us. And it is a perfect crown, cap, finish line for our Holy Week journey, for our full church year journey, for our lifetime journey. And if you would like to uh, learn a little bit more about Jesus, if you would like to dig in more to the Word, we have a number of Bible study options available, even now, even online. And if you'd like to uh, learn a little bit more about that or our congregation in general, um, feel free to send us a message on whatever platform you're joining us on, and we will uh, help you out and direct you from there. Now, uh, this morning, uh, as, it, as this caps so many uh, marvelous events, I want to thank every single person that's been a part of putting this together through uh, challenging times. Uh, especially this morning, uh, I, I'm proud to have some special musicians around to make this Easter um, just a little bit more special. And so uh, I'm, th I'm thankful to them, but uh, I am excited and ready to go, and I invite you to worship with us from your homes. As you can see the order of worship on the screen, on the feed, you can follow along right from there. And uh, from that, let's get started. Let's uh, stand to our feet and begin with our opening hymn. <laughs> Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if, but if we confess, confess our sins, sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a time of confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me. And have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected. Has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords. Up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from the 31st chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. 
Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from the third chapter of Colossians. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a first-year confirmation student whose claim to fame in confirmation class is that every single class, at the beginning of class and at the end of class, he volunteers to lead us in prayer. A most unusual thing for a middle school boy. Now, the unique thing about his prayers that has kind of become infamous in the class, and even with some of the parents and sponsors, is that his prayers, they're really extreme. He prays for things that sound like, um, Dear Lord, thank you that none of us was found dead in a ditch today, and thank you also for this confirmation class, amen. Or even maybe a step further, Dear Lord, please don't let any of us get in some kind of farm machinery accident and have our limbs torn off before we get back together for class next week. And thank you that we've all been able to gather. Amen. <laughs> kind of extreme. But in these days and weeks, that we've just been through, I've kind of decided maybe this confirmation student is somewhat of a prophet or philosopher. Because I gotta admit, my prayers lately have been a little bit more extreme. I'm praying for Thanksgiving that the people of my congregation haven't gotten sick with a global pandemic. That's a first. I am praying Thanksgiving that my family hasn't had their health affected by a global pandemic. That's a first. I'm asking God to protect and shield economic effects from our grace community, from my family. That's a first. And I'm doing all of this with an eye on the fact that those prayers could change to something even more extreme any time. With everything that's going on around us, it feels kind of extreme. And it's difficult to sort through. But back to our philosopher, prophet, confirmation student, I asked him once why his prayers are so extreme in this way. And mind you, it's difficult to get a straight answer out of a confirmation age boy for something like this. But he told me something to the effect of, well, if, you know, maybe if something like that was going to happen, I would want God to, you know, like, do something about it. I can't argue with that. And maybe with everything going on around us and our prayers kind of collectively rising in a little bit more extreme way, maybe that's the refrain of our prayers in general. God, what is going on in the world? Why don't you do something? Or maybe even, God, I'm hurting here. I'm scared. I'm lonely. Why don't you do something about it? I thought you cared. As much as this has become kind of a refrain of our prayers in recent weeks, it's really not all that new, is it? Because even before the COVID-19 crisis started, if we just look at our own grace community, we had reasons to be hurting, grieving, fearful, lonely. We saw the effects of disease and death in the world around us and the people we care about. We were hurting then too. And so maybe in those cases, the refrain of our prayers is there also. God, I'm, I'm hurting. 
Why don't you do something? I think it's right there. Right there in our moments of greatest weakness or pain or mourning or loneliness or fear. That we are uniquely situated to step into our gospel lesson today. And I got to tell you, as my greatest fear with everything going on around us was that it would reach all the way until Easter. I think there's a lot of reasons that we've maybe collectively reached this sort of rock bottom point that we're hurting, that we're suffering, that we're grieving, that we feel the brokenness of the world. And so collectively together, let's take a step into that gospel lesson. In our gospel lesson, we see two Marys off to the tomb. And I'm sure that all too often we take this scene of these women headed off to the tomb and we package it up nice like in a present with pastel wrapping paper and a bow and call it part of the Easter joy. And we imagine them skipping off with baskets and having delightful conversation on their way to the tomb and just being part of the Easter joy. Nothing could be farther from the truth of what's going on. Let's just think about that for a minute. These two women, they are terrified right now because they don't know what's going to happen. They could be in danger. That's to start with. Now let's add the foundation of it all is that they just watched two days earlier, they just watched on Friday, one of their very closest friends brutally killed right in front of them. When you walk through that kind of a trauma, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to say they probably haven't slept much the past couple of nights. I don't think it's that much of a stretch to imagine that they have those like dull headaches that you get from crying too much. I don't think it's that much of a stretch to think that as they walk to the cemetery to pay their last respects and prepare the body, of someone that was as close as family. They're just staring off in the distance without any conversation at all. These women are broken. These women are devastated. These women probably can barely see with the tears welling up in their eyes as they remember and even look forward. When we see that kind of suffering in our fellow humanity, I think the refrain of our prayers continues right on. God, why didn't you do something? They're hurting. I'm hurting. We're hurting. So, Rock bottom it is. But the interesting thing about rock bottom is that it seems to be that in our moments of greatest brokenness and weakness and pain, that's when God's power and might and glory and compassion shows the brightest in our lives and in our world. So we go back to the women at the tomb. They're, they're able to actually get into the tomb, but it's not what they thought they were going to find. No, an angel speaks to them. He says, I know why you're here. You're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen. And those words of the angel right there changed eternity. 
And now we can almost imagine in our moments of greatest weakness and greatest pain and loneliness and fear that those words of that angel mean that the living, risen Jesus Christ is reaching into your life. And he's reaching out his hands and drawing you ever closer to himself. And maybe it's there that we notice something. Those hands are pierced. Those hands are, are scarred. Maybe he did something after all. And so now, because of the living, pierced hands of the Lord Jesus, all of a sudden, some things are abundantly clear. Those moments of grief and pain that come from things that we've done, all of our sins have been forgiven because he did something. All the punishment that our sins deserve, well, he took care of that on the cross because he did something. Every single moment that a tear wells up in one of our eyes, he is right there with his pierced hands drawing us ever closer to himself because he lives and he did something. Hell, separation from God, shut, because he did something. Heaven, gates are wide open for you, because he did something. Never, ever again, even for a moment, will you ever truly be alone, because he did something for you. You know, he didn't just do something either. He dies and gives you everything. And then he rises to give you even more. So now, propped up by the support of those pierced, loving, living hands. We can do something. We can take all the grief and all the pain and all the suffering and all the fear and all the loneliness of our lives and we can, we can stand right in front of it knowing that the support of those pierced, living, loving hands will be holding us up and we can, we can breathe in real deep. And we can stand up really straight. And with all confidence and boldness, we can stare right at all the darkest places of our lives and world and proudly proclaim, I know that my Redeemer lives you lose. He is risen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds focused on the risen Lord Jesus to life eternal. Amen. We confess together our common belief in the triune God with the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
From then she will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. Risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted in our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our President, Ralph, our Governor, the Congress of these United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word, that justice may be given to all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer from mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. We especially lift before you all those suffering in any kind of way through this pandemic time. We also lift up before you with praise and thanksgiving the birth of Charlotte to the Weiss family. Give them grace according to their need. Sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged with glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Savior, before the words come to our lips, you know the desires of our heart. Hear our prayers as expressions of our trust, that you supply us with all things needful and keep from us all things harmful. O crucified and risen Savior, with the Father and the Spirit, you reign as one Lord, one God. Hear the prayers of your people. Your will be done, O Lord, now and always. Amen. Thank you. 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and joy. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.